In this video, I will discuss the role of theory in qualitative research. And specifically, I want to focus on answering the question of whether you have to have a theoretical framework in your study. This is something that you ask me so often. Do I need to have or do I have to have a theoretical framework in my research? And uh, those of you who, who had a, a private lesson with me know that uh, the answer is kind of no, but it's it's kind of no. Uh, so, <laughs> as as you know, in qualitative research, there is hardly any right or wrong. I often say that hardly any black and white. So, and what does this depend on? So, it specifically depends on how you understand, how you define a theory. What is a theory? How you see uh, the place of theory, the role of theory in the study, and most importantly, how you define theoretical framework. So, so that's why, hence this, this weird and confusing answer, because more often than not, when you ask me, do I have to have a theoretical framework in my study, there is a certain definition or certain understanding of what a theoretical framework is that you have, in which case my, answers, my answer is no. But let's start, uh, let's start from the beginning. So we will have to um, we'll have to break all of this down into small details in order to answer that question. I'll have to discuss briefly the role of theory, like I said, so what is the role of theory in research? Where does it manifest itself in qualitative research? And then uh, define a theoretical framework. That's crucial. And after that, I will be able to tell you my, uh, to give you my response and you'll be able to not only understand my response, but also uh, just make your own judgment as to the role of theory in your study. So firstly, like I said, let's discuss the role and place of theory in qualitative research. Let's understand where, what is the use of theory, what role it plays in qualitative research. So here, uh, Collins and Stockton, or perhaps Stockton and Collins, I'm not sure. I'll put the, the reference uh, on the screen and also in the description. Uh, when they discuss, uh, it's a really good article, so I recommend reading it. Uh, to explore the topic further, but when they discuss the uh, the place of theory, the use of theory, uh, they list uh, four common uses of theory in qualitative research, to which I also want to add one more. So, uh, so the first one is uh, the theory is being used in the discussions of uh, epistemological and ontological uh, positions, the philosophical paradigms. So I have a separate video on this topic, of course, I won't be breaking this down into, into details now, but, uh, but overall, uh, this is where uh, our first use of theory occurs. So when we talk about, as you know, you have to talk about your philosophical, the paradigms, the worldviews and all of that. You have to talk about this, you have to define it. So that's the first way in which uh, theory uh, plays a role in, in how we see the world, how we see the world, how we, what we understand about the world, our beliefs about how to, uh, how to research, how to study that world. So that's obviously quite an important role already. So the second use of theory is a theory of research methods. Theory of research methods, in other words, methodologies. I also have a separate video about this. So again, I won't be listing the different methodologies, but overall uh, there are different theories. And I do explain in that video how uh, the methodologies, which are case study and ethnography and this kind of uh, overall, uh, let's say, structures, overall templates for our study, how these methodologies have to do and what they have to do with theories. Because depending on, uh, again, how you view the world, you will choose a certain methodology. You'll believe that a certain methodology is effective in the first place. So that's, that's the second way in which theory does play a role in, in qualitative research. And then the third way is uh, building theory through our findings. Again, we don't, and that's also something I discuss in another video when I talk about uh, when I talk about grounded theory. Uh, we don't always have to build a theory as such, but we do provide some kind of explanation. We're doing research and we provide some kind of explanation. So, so in this sense, we're building a theory. So that's from our findings, some kind of a theory uh, starts to emerge, and that's the third way in which theory manifests itself in our research. Now, the fourth way is something I wish to add to the list before moving on to the final point that these two authors make. The fourth way are simply uh, is simply uh, the role of existing theories, existing ideas, concepts, and understanding. So the role of our uh, literature that we review in the literature review. That's also the role of theory because, of course, uh, you will develop some kind of some set of assumptions, some set of understandings 
uh, when you before you embark on your research journey. So that's the fourth uh, use of theory. And final, uh, finally, the fifth use of theory, the fifth uh, potential use of theory is when theory is used as a framework for our studies, for uh, as a framework for our whole study. And in this sense, uh, this guide or framework is being applied to a study including our data analysis. So, uh, so you're using something, literally a framework or a model, a set of concepts that somebody developed, you're using that uh, for example, when you analyze your data or when you're planning your data collection methods, so for example, planning your interview questions, you're only exploring different elements from somebody's model, for example. And then when you analyze the data, you're also only looking for these elements from that model. So it's being used, as, a, as I said, as a template, as a framework for our study. I will come back to this uh, meaning of this, uh, of this theory or theoretical framework uh, later on in this video because I do believe that that's exactly what's relevant for answering our question of whether we need a theoretical framework. But as you see already, there are so many different uses of theory. So it's not just having this kind of a framework. The theory, the role of theory uh, is evident in choosing methods and, and choosing the overall approach and our beliefs about research and what we do with our findings. So as uh, another uh, popular a uh, pair of authors say, Lincoln and Guba, or Guba, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, it's not possible to not have any theory in our study. Although, uh, as they say, we may, have, uh, we may have a very inductive and exploratory uh, study, it's simply not possible to have uh, no theory and no theoretical framework in our study. So now let's define theoretical framework. So that's the next stop on our way to answering the question of whether you need that theoretical framework. We now know, uh, we now know uh, the, about the, the role of theory and how it can manifest. So now what is a theoretical framework? That's, uh, that's very important. So as Collins and Stockton, the guys I previously referred to, explain a theoretical framework is at the intersection of uh, the existing knowledge and previously formed ideas about complex phenomena. So it's kind of what I mentioned about the previous literature, assumptions, previous knowledge. Uh, then uh, the researcher's epistemological dispositions, which is also what I mentioned when I discussed the different paradigms and worldviews. And finally, a lens and a methodically analytic approach. So, uh, so this will be both about the methodology that we choose and also specifically about how we approach data analysis, also a point I previously made. So as you can see from this definition, a theoretical framework uh, and this meaning is not something that I pre previously mentioned as uh, being a template or a structure, a model that we impose on our study, but rather it's uh, something more dynamic. It's an uh, intersection of, of different ideas and different uh, knowledge. Uh, so, so it's our knowledge from the literature, it's our understanding of concepts. Uh, so, so when you, for example, conduct a study of identity, surely you're talking about some kind of literature, you're defining the term identity, you're adopting some uh, view of identity and there are different views as uh, identity is something flexible and stable, there are different uh, different schools of thought. So, uh, so you're adopting, you're choosing some kind of uh, uh, some way of thinking about identity. You're choosing certain definitions. You're choosing certain authors, uh, certain uh, schools of thought uh, as a whole. So, uh, so this will be, of course, uh, this will essentially have an influence on your study. And coupled with uh, with this knowledge, this uh, theoretical knowledge. Uh, are your assumptions about the world, your views, your philosophical assumptions, and then in addition to that, what plays a role are your methodological uh, assumptions and again your, your beliefs and approaches and how you want to approach this study. So, uh, so this has a huge influence on the whole study, on how you even, or on what kind of study you want to conduct, uh, what kind of research questions you want to answer, what methods you choose for your study. So obviously this theoretical framework in this sense is something that you can really avoid. You absolutely have to have some, some sort of uh, set of beliefs, like I mentioned, to even start, uh, to even approach your research. So from this perspective, Miriam, 
uh, concluded that it's again it's not possible not to have a theoretical framework even if your study is very inductive you absolutely have to have a theoretical framework with which i would agree because as i just explained it's simply not possible to to not have any of these uh, beliefs that we we discussed in this video because then you're simply not ready to conduct your study and then there is another uh, interesting quote by walcott uh, who uh, who compares the role of theory to to take in uh, vitamin c so uh, walcott, walcott says theory is something like physical exercise or taking vitamin c some people get hooked on it even to uh, excess others uh, give it as little conscious attention as possible but no one can do without it entirely so that's the thing you cannot do without any theory in your study however and this is a very important however this does not mean that you absolutely have to have a theoretical framework in your study so now i'm finally answering the question that i asked at the beginning of this video but prior to that if you're enjoying this content and learning something new from this video i would really appreciate it if you give the video a like also if you have any questions feel free to uh, ask these questions or post any comments under this video and if you require a more detailed assistance maybe something is still not clear and you want to meet me directly face to face uh, then uh, feel free to explore the different options for private tutorials that i list on my website so what do i mean by saying that we do not have to have a theory or theoretical framework in our study after everything i said in this video after all these quotes that said you absolutely do have to have a theoretical framework and it's like vitamin and you cannot do without it what do i mean so now uh, to understand what i mean let's get back to the different uses of theory that i listed at the beginning of this video and the final one uh, stated that you can use a theory as a uh, as a guide or as a framework for the whole study so as i explained this uh, in particular refers to data collection where you may uh, use the previous uh, theory or a previously established model to frame your interview questions to develop your data collection methods to simply try to replicate to use uh, that that study replicate the findings uh, to see whether your findings are similar and then this feeds into our data uh, data analysis stage so as i said you may only be interesting this would be a very didactic in fact study where you're only interested uh, in finding things from that model or from that framework you're not really interested in finding new things you're not interested in developing some kind of new explanation from your data but rather you're simply interested in, in checking are these things are these elements from that model present in my data so in these discussions between me and my students when they asked me do i have to have a theoretical framework or they said my supervisor or my teacher said i have to have a theoretical framework that's guiding my study that's guiding my analysis that's the kind of understanding of theory that uh, that we arrived at so and this is what i said before when i said the answer is no assuming that this is your understanding of a theoretical framework and very often this proves to be your understanding of a theoretical framework in this sense as i always say you absolutely do not have to have such framework in fact i don't really like the idea of having such framework in a qualitative and exploratory and usually quite inductive research because as i always explain this limits your findings this uh, this kills so to speak the the creativity and the potential of your study to really contribute new knowledge to the topic because instead of being inductive and being exploratory and uh, providing new knowledge and new understanding that emerges straight from your data and your context and your participants you're simply uh, narrowing everything down and limiting your findings to to ticking uh, you know the boxes for for elements from somebody else's theory to see if that is present in your context and this uh, i don't like and i don't support of course there are studies uh, uh, where this makes sense but this is just to say that you're absolutely not expected and required to do uh, to apply this kind of practice to your study and it seems to be a very common misconception that in fact you do need to do that so in that sense you absolutely don't have to have a model or a framework and otherwise as we kind of established in this video you will have a theoretical framework understood as a set uh, a mixture of all these assumptions and and knowledge and beliefs that i mentioned in that sense 
inevitably you will have a theoretical framework and some set of uh, beliefs uh, prior to embarking on your study.